Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. How does the Quran view the Bible? Does it look upon it favorably or unfavorably? We're beginning a new series discussing this very question, and with me is Dr. Shabir Ali. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My pleasure to be on. Now, this is a perennial question, Dr. Shabir, that we deal with over and over again, but it's still very pertinent, and I understand you have your own perspective on it, so hopefully we'll get to that in the process of doing this series. But Dr. Shabir, you know, when Christians, when Muslims engage with Christians, they often have these discussions where the question is, well, how, how does the Qur'an view the Bible, right? Um, and, you know, at, in some points, the Qur'an says positive things, and in other areas, it criticizes uh, the previous scriptures. So we wanted to talk about that a little bit more on the show. Yes, uh, and uh, though we've answered uh, the question uh, here and there sporadically from time to time, uh, it is uh, useful for us to uh, have the whole series of discussions so that we can look at all aspects of this question. Uh, for example, there are positive statements in the Quran regarding the previous scripture, so we need to capture those and pay attention to them. Uh, but on the flip side, there are also statements which Muslims often cite uh, to indicate that uh, the previous scriptures are not all intact. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so those need to be kept in view as well. Uh, but we also need to be familiar with uh, the way in which uh, our Christian friends have responded to some of these uh, verses that were cited by Muslims uh, to indicate the supposed falsification or corruption uh, or changes in the previous scriptures. Um, and uh, we, we also need to understand how Muslims have interpreted the various passages over time, because that's part of the contention that has arisen uh, uh, that have, uh, uh, part of the contention that has risen recently, uh, with uh, some missionaries for another faith pointing to Muslims uh, that uh, our great predecessors in the interpretive tradition on the Quran, uh, have uh, sometimes indicated that the, the previous scriptures are still intact. So mm. uh, the question put to the modern Muslim is, how can you differ from uh, the classical exegetes in saying now that uh, there have been changes in those previous scriptures? Uh, and uh, it sometimes seems um, disingenuous to our Christian friends, as you've already uh, indicated, that on the one hand, Muslims would uh, quote certain passages from the Bible uh, to justify a Muslim claim, uh, especially the claim that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was foretold by previous scriptures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the question is, okay, if you are citing the Bible as your proof, well, why do you not accept the rest of the Bible? Mm -hmm. And yet the Muslims find it difficult to accept the rest of the Bible because uh, much that is there in, in the Bible would contradict some core Muslim doctrines. Yes, at least. And, and even the Quranic commentaries refer to the Bible in some aspects, but not in others. So the question is like, what's going on here? Are yes. you being honest? Yeah, so we need yeah. to, yeah, we need to sort this out. Uh, and uh, uh, to add to this, the, the final uh, cap on this, I might say, is that uh, the uh, modern Muslim uh, debater who, you know, engages with uh, people of the book uh, on questions of theology and, and so on, um, uh, would often uh, rely on post-19th century uh, criticisms of the Bible. And in fact, in, in our present times, you will find that some Muslim apologists uh, would uh, rely a lot on uh, folks like Bart Ehrman and other uh, Bible scholars who are critical of the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, our Christian friends look at this and say, well, wait a minute, you seem to be going against your Quran because your Quran speaks positively about the Bible. How could you rely on critics of the Bible for the case that you're making? Uh, so we, we need to then uh, capture all of these various strands of thought into a holistic system in which we understand how the Quran actually views the Bible, how should Muslims view the Bible today, and how can we um, use the Bible in our dialogues with our uh, Christian friends. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a brief rundown, Dr. Shabir, of how this series will proceed? Yes, uh, we will uh, start by uh, being clear that when the Quran refers to the previous scriptures, the Quran uh, refers to what we might regard to be as parts of the Bible. So the Quran uh, refers to the Torah, the Psalms, and the Gospel in the singular, 
not necessarily to the whole Bible and not necessarily to all of the Gospels. Uh, we will look at those uh, verses which have been cited as indicating uh, a positive view uh, of the Bible on the part of the Quran. So the Quran, for example, saying that Muslims should believe not only in the Quran, but also in the revelations given to the previous prophets. Uh, the fact that the Quran says that it came as a confirmation of those revelations given in the Torah and the Gospel. Uh, the fact that the Quran speaks about uh, the uh, Torah containing guidance and light, and uh, the Gospel also containing guidance and light. And the Quran calls on Christians uh, to follow the, the, the Gospel, at least by, to judge uh, by what God has revealed therein. Uh, so, so that's on the positive side, and much more can be said uh, in, 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 in those terms. Then on the negative side, we want to see those verses which Muslims have tended to cite. For example, uh, Surah 2, verse 79, which says, uh, Woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands, and then say it is from God to profit thereby uh, but a little. Uh, so what might this mean? Muslims take it to mean that the previous scriptures are corrupt, but then, in response to verses like this, our Christian friends say, no, it does not really say uh, Torah or, or Psalms or Gospel in this particular place. Mm -hmm. We don't know what was being written by whom. Maybe they were writing something uh, extraneous to Scripture and then claiming that this is from God, mm -hmm. which uh, both Muslims and Christians uh, would agree is wrong to claim. Uh, so the, the Quran in this instance, they would say, is not speaking about the corruption of the previous scriptures necessarily, but about the corruption of people who are trying to foist non-scripture uh, on people as though it were scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so on, on and on the discussion goes like this. So we will look at those uh, verses which are cited by Muslims and how our Christian friends uh, and others have responded to the Muslim claim uh, that the previous scriptures are um, corrupted or falsified or changed in, in some way. Mm -hmm. We would also look more closely at uh, the Muslim commentaries to see how they regarded the previous scriptures. And uh, we will find that uh, often though the commentaries uh, and Muslims in general uh, do speak and should speak positively of the previous scriptures as the, the Quran itself does, uh, when it comes down to a crunch where uh, something is uh, unacceptable to, to Muslims given the framework of Muslim theology and is found in the Bible, uh, the Muslims would uh, withhold judgment at that time or uh, they might even openly say, well, we don't accept this because this is contrary to what we believe. And the implication is that this part could not be from God. Maybe somebody made a mistake in the transmission of this or something. But uh, uh, Towards the, the end of this series, I hope to capture all of these various strands uh, by bringing them into a holistic system of thought in which uh, I will uh, advance uh, what I believe to be uh, the true Quranic stance towards the previous scriptures and the stance which Muslims should adopt in dealing with our Christian friends, uh, a stance that will be characterized by, on the one hand, respect for the previous scriptures, uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, a hesitation to accept uh, certain uh, passages which, uh, from the Quranic point of view, uh, as I would explain, uh, could not possibly be from, from God, but might have been due to uh, some error in the transmission process. As the books were first revealed orally to the previous prophets, and then eventually uh, reduced to the written documents that we have now, uh, even after the uh, centuries of transmission in both the oral form and then eventually the written form. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shabir, how do you think that the conversation um, in this series will advance dialogue between Christians and Muslims? Well, on the one hand, it will um, uh, help our Christian friends to get over this uh, suspicion that Muslims are being disingenuous. They think that when, uh, or some will think that when Muslims cite the Bible for, to prove one point, but does not accept the Bible on another point, the Muslim is being inconsistent and disingenuous. Uh, secondly, it will uh, help uh, uh, our Christian friends to um, get over the same sort of uh, doubt and misgiving uh, when they think that Muslims are 
constrained to follow the Quran on the one hand in, in thinking that the, uh, the, the previous scriptures must be intact, for, for thus the Christian missionary reads the Quran. And uh, on the other hand, they find that the Muslim is not accepting some Christian doctrines which uh, are supposedly based on the previous scriptures. So again, the Muslim is seen to be inconsistent. And a mm -hmm. Christian will say to a Muslim, well, your Quran says that uh, your prophet even is supposed to ask uh, us, the people of the scripture, about what is in our scripture. Presumably that means that our scripture is whole and intact. Mm -hmm. and, and yet you are disagreeing with our scripture. So you are at odds with your own book and with your own uh, prophet. Uh, so hopefully the, the series will help both sides to get over this uh, um, uh, feeling of suspicion and doubt. I hope that it will also help Muslims in particular. Yeah, I was thinking about yes. that. Yes. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, as I've already indicated, uh, uh, Muslims uh, um, are, are not all of, of a, a monolith. Uh, you know, the, we, we have a diversity of views among Muslims. And uh, you will find that though the majority of Muslim scholars over time have said that the previous scriptures um, are not entirely uh, retained intact, uh, there have been some dissenting voices uh, against that uh, general consensus. Uh, so there have been a few who um, think that the previous scriptures, according to the Quran, uh, do remain intact. So we will need to sort that out and find out why are they thinking so and, and does their position really hold up um, in, in the face of uh, the actual evidence uh, that we will be surveying in this uh, entire series. So altogether, it is going to be a very profitable series and uh, in the very next uh, segment, uh, we, it would behove uh, us to identify uh, what exactly the Quran is referring to when it says Torah, Psalms, and gospel. Does it refer to the whole Bible or parts within the Bible and, and which parts? All right. Thank you for that, Akshbir. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it as well. I believe it will be a very fruitful and uh, enlightening uh, discussion. And uh, I hope that the solution that I will offer to the dilemmas raised uh, will be a uh, reasonable solution uh, that will be acceptable by many people. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today. <laughs>